We were doing a, a route clearance mission, and I took one step forward and I slept on a pressure plate IED and uh, lost both my legs. Basically, after I got blown up, they put me on a litter and uh, carried me to an area about 200 to 300 meters away uh, through a pomegranate field. And uh, that's where I was uh, medevaced from the helicopter. We got a call about six o'clock in the morning and he was pretty blunt about it, but very, uh, I appreciate the way he handled the situation. And uh, he had told us that Andrew was probably gonna be in a medically induced coma, at least through Germany, and then probably till he got to Walter Reed. I was in the hospital for about, um, the, as inpatient in the hospital for about a month. Our family, we spend uh, about a week with him at a time and uh, we kind of rotate people in. Beginning of December, I got my, my right leg and that's where I started uh, just standing on one leg with the parallel bars. And then uh, mid-December, I got my left leg. And from there on, it's been just walking around. We tried to, to make our home as accessible as we could, and we tried to renovate the shower, and we tried to put bars and things of that sort in there, and we tried to make our bathroom accessible in terms of him using a, a toilet. And we just realized that how difficult it is to, uh, to, to, to make a normal home handicap accessible or a wheelchair accessible. You have to get out of your wheelchair and, and uh, just pull yourself up the stairs and it makes it so you, you don't even want to go upstairs. Like going like a traditional hallway in a wheelchair, you can't, you can't stop and turn around. You have to go forward or you have to wheel yourself backwards and then you run in the wall and things all over the place and you get frustrated. You know, as much as I'd like to wear my legs, I can't wear them all the time. Such so as I have to be in my wheelchair like at night or what happens to my prosthetics don't work or uh, just something, I have a surgery or something like that and I'm wheelchair bound and then I'd, I'd almost be like stuck like in my, in my own house and that's never what you want to have. A home for Andrew from the Homes for the Troops folks will be just amazing in terms of him being able to be totally independent like he was before. He, they have uh, places where he could roll his wheelchair up to the sink and, and get in there. Uh, the, the, the stove tops, everything is, is built so he can do everything himself just like he did before and he'll have that total sense of independence again. All the doorways are uh, ADA accessible, means they're, they're wide enough for my wheelchair to fit through. Uh, I can spin my wheelchair around uh, almost anywhere in the, in the shower, in the closet, in the bedroom, like anywhere in the bathroom. The toilets have bars put on them so I can transfer myself. The shower, uh, is easy, I can roll in with my wheelchair easily. The new home is going to uh, help me in so many ways because it's accessible for me from my wheelchair so I, I can get around everywhere um, independently. It really makes us feel a lot more comfortable that, that Andrew's going to be safe, secure, and independent in this new place. We have, have seen the, uh, the outpouring from our community and different organizations, and especially this one, to open up their, their arms and their checkbooks to help these fellows who've been injured so badly in the service of the country. And it's organizations like this one that have really come in and, and been uh, just, just a blessing for us. People do care uh, that, you're, that you're wounded and that you aren't forgotten about and you're not gonna be pushed to the side uh, like in the past that uh, people still do care about soldiers and uh, the ones that are wounded.